Welcome to another episode of Fear the Old Lore, where we look at the English and Japanese versions of games for more insight into their lore. One issue that's come up fairly often within Elden Ring's lore is whether the great tree mentioned in the Root Resin, Death Root, and Deep Root Depths map description is meant to refer to the Erd Tree or another tree entirely. In Japanese, there are times where Great Tree and Air Tree are used synonymously, like in D and the Lane Del Finger Reader Crone's dialogue and the tree in Bisurko, making it clear they're the same. So why all this confusion? Did the localizers make a mistake? Not exactly. Root resins use two different terms to refer to the Great Tree and the Air Tree, which makes them sound more distinct. Since Root Resin says the Great Tree's roots were once connected to the Air Tree, It'd be fairly natural to assume they're different trees, and I also thought they were meant to be different trees the first time I looked at it. But technically speaking, the Root Resin translation is accurate, and part of the confusion in identifying whether the Great Tree is the Air Tree stems from how inconsistently Great Tree is translated into English. Death Root, Root Resin, and the Deep Root Depths map description has Great Tree written as one word, making it clear it's a specific term, whereas in the Langdell Finger Reader Crone's dialogue it has a space. Dee's dialogue near Summon Water Village calls the Great Tree the Air Tree. Your soul will return to the Earth Tree. And the tree in the tree and bee surcoat comes from Great Tree, and it's an explicit reference to the Air Tree as well. If these were consistently translated as Great Tree without a space, it may have been easier to link them together, but things are rarely ever that simple, and there could be a number of reasons for the differences, like character limits and item names. Even so, with only three explicit references to the air tree being the great tree, it would still be easy to miss, especially since Dee's dialogue is borderline cut content, with the trigger to hear it being meeting him outside Summon Water Village, listening to his prayer, then walking away and coming back before ever interacting with him. By recognizing that the air tree and great tree are synonymous, we can come to some pretty interesting revelations about the lore. As mentioned before, Root Resin states the Great Tree's roots were once connected to the Air Tree, implying that they aren't anymore. If the Air Tree isn't connected to its roots, it could help explain why the Air Tree is tilted, and it leads to questions of how, when, and why it happened. There are two major possibilities. The Air Tree could have become disconnected from its roots after the Shattering, or could have happened when the Golden Order subjugated the Crucible. It's a little confusing since depending on how one reads the Crucible Knight Armor set, it can sound as though the Air Tree came from the Crucible or that the Crucible predates it. However, Silurius Tree Spear in the Godskin Noble set, oddly enough, clarified that the Crucible was the primordial form of the Air Tree. It's why Silurius Spear, which is modeled on the Crucible, is shaped like a tree, and it's why the Crucible style incantations bear a seal of the Air Tree when they're cast. The Crucible symbolizes all life blending together, and items like old fangs, budding horns, and the Crucible scale knot and wing talismans highlight that the vestigial elements of primordial life appear under the Crucible's influence. Thus, creatures like the Omen and Misbegotten can appear covered in horns and cysts, or even have additional appendages like wings and tails. It's unclear when exactly it happened, but it seems that by confining destined death to create the Golden Order, the Air Tree was affected, and over time, those who received the Crucible's blessing came to be reviled for being a reminder and symbol of a more primitive era. Compared to the Crucible, which let the power of life run wild, the Golden Order is more regimented, and advanced civilization by inhibiting life's more primal traits through the power of regression. While the Law of Regression is described as the pull of meaning, that all things yearn eternally to converge, another aspect of regression relates to what's called a regression towards the mean. A real-life phenomenon where outliers from the norm are more likely to gravitate back towards the baseline than continue producing greater extremes. One common example of this is that two parents who are taller than average are more likely to have a child that's shorter than they are even though it may still be taller than average. With the law of regression being a fundamental principle in the Golden Order, life's most extreme traits are slowly regressing and being averaged away. This is most clearly on display when we compare dragons to their ancient predecessors. Instead of having four legs and four wings, modern dragons only have two of each and lack the ancient dragon's gravel stone scales of immortality. There isn't enough evidence to say for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if the demi-humans were a more evolved form of beastmen or misbegotten, and it's interesting to me how they seem more intelligent by being able to communicate with humans like in the case of Bach, 
or cast rudimentary magic like with the demi-human queens. We're not given enough details to have the full picture of what happened, but it seems that the grace of gold was also altered when destined death was sealed upon the creation of the Golden Order. According to Ordovis' greatsword, the Crucible Horn Shield, and the Gilded Great Shield, gold during the time of the Crucible was tinged with red that's missing today. If this red hue is confined with destined death, it would explain why modern dragons don't use red lightning like their ancient forebears. And according to the Gravelstone Seal, the worship of the ancient dragons does not conflict with belief in the Erd Tree. After all, this seal and lightning itself are both imbued with gold. Death may have been meant to be part of life during the Age of the Crucible, as Heroes Runes mentions how heroes blessed by the Erd Tree simply died upon earning their honor on the battlefield, but this doesn't seem to be the case for the Golden Order. Again, we're not given direct answers, but according to things like the Aristocrat set, the Veteran set, Akil's Flame, and Hugh's Dialogue, the denizens of the Lands Between may be unable to die a natural death. By creating the Golden Order, Radigan and America may have sought to create a new epic of unending life, but over time this blessing eventually became a curse. By halting the cycle of life and death, a major theme in FromSoft games, the denizens of the Lands Between became old, desiccated, hollow shells of their former selves, and most characters we see in-game are little more than mindless zombies. This fixation on removing death is carried over into the Golden Order's incantations as well. Compared to the incantations of the Air Tree, which have blessings that can grant life, the incantations of the Golden Order are focused on eradicating death. When Rani slew Godwin with the Stolen Rune of Death, the principles of the Golden Order made it so he was unable to become a true martyr and fully die. Instead, his dead yet alive corpse began to sprout death root, which infiltrated the lands between through the roots of the Great Tree, the Air Tree. Unfortunately, we don't know exactly when the Air Tree became disconnected from its roots. It could have happened upon the inception of the Golden Order. After all, what need would there be for one soul to return to the air tree if they were functionally immortal? Or it could have happened during the Shattering. In the E3 2019 announcement trailer, when Merrick and Radigan strike the Elden Ring, we can see fractures appear on their body. Fractures which are reflected in the air tree. They were absent in early portraits of it. Additionally, compared to the early portraits which showed the air tree standing upright, the air tree we see today is tilted over as though it were no longer anchored to its base. But with Queen America's goal being to slay a god, or the Elden Beast, I could see her following the path of the Golden Order if she believed it would give her the strength to do so, or if she believed the Golden Order would significantly weaken it. With the Golden Order sealing destined death, she may have wanted to prevent souls returning to the Elden Beast, as the Ancestral Spirit's Horn mentions how new life grows from death, and from death one obtains power. Despite Radigan aspiring to be complete through his study of Raya Lucarian sorcery, his Golden Order was imperfect, and Godwin's death exposed the flaw in it. Queen Merica was driven to the brink, and it may have been then that she decided to shatter the Elden Ring. In Merica's own words, O oh Radigan, leal hound of the Golden Order, thou art yet to become me. Thou art yet to become a god. Let us be shattered, both mine other self. Of course, we're not given a direct answer as to what triggered Merica's shattering of the Elden Ring or the intimate details of her motivations, so there's a lot that's left open to interpretation. I wish there was more concrete information related to the time preceding the shattering, but until we get future updates or DLC, it's unlikely we'll reach any definitive conclusions. I hope what I've shared so far has been interesting or informative, and if you have any thoughts or questions about this topic at large, I'd be interested to hear them in the comments section or in my Discord server. At the risk of rambling or including redundant information, I couldn't cover absolutely everything I wanted to, but I hope this video will serve as a platform for further inquiry and discussions about the game. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching.
I'd also like to give a special thank you to all my patrons, channel members, commenters, and subscribers. Your continued support makes it easier working on these kinds of projects, and I look forward to covering more Elden Ring in the future. Fear, the old lore.